what's going on youtube welcome back to the channel guys it is mike living with 3m auto vlogging in the house and it's almost christmas time so i thought i would surprise my wife got her her this is her toyota 4runner 2016 it did not come with remote start and you guys know it's getting cold pretty cold in north carolina so i reached out to start x for the remote starter kit for this model. When you're ordering, be sure if you've got key start, order the key start. If you've got push button, order the one for push button. So, but I reached out to them and got this. I'm gonna tell you something really quick that kind of burns me up. I contacted two or three different uh, aftermarket companies nearby, like speed shops, performance shops that do window tinting, wheels, tires, car audio that sort of thing and I was really frustrated when they all tried to talk to me like I was seven years old and tell me that well we'll sell you we'll do this but we've got to install it and there's custom programming has to be done so you're looking about five hundred and forty nine dollars out the door and I'm like no no I mean you know you don't even know me I could I could I, I'm a little bit smarter than that, I, I would think. I mean, I know I'm not a rocket scientist, but that gone. Okay, so basically, this unit was 199 or 196 plus tax. Shipping was free off of Amazon. I'll put a link in the description below. So my neighbor is deciding he's gonna weed eat this morning, so that's good. But uh, anyway. You guys follow along just a few simple tools we can get this done all right so i'm going to take the kit we're going to open it up we've got instructions we've got the actual kit itself you'll just need a few tools like for one thing I'm using is a, a door plastic plastic door pin puller or a plastic puller it allows you to get up under the plastic you're gonna need it for you we're gonna be working in this area right here and the bottom of this so I'm gonna show you how to take this off so most of most of the work's gonna be right here one connection up under here so we're gonna have to take this bottom piece apart so these are always good tools to have when you're working around plastic so um but let's get started okay so the first thing what i want to do we got to gain access to under the panel so you can't turn your steering wheel because it's locked uh, have the key with you and don't push the brake but we're going to just start up where you can move the steering wheel um and if you will see sorry about the radio if you will see right there there is a screw right in here when i turn the wheel all right i think it's a phillips head then we got one over here yes so i'm gonna loosen those remove remove them take them out I found it a lot easier just to crank the car to turn the steering wheel. Be careful not to drop your screws. I'm doing this with one hand. So keep everything on the floor mat. So that one's out. Don't turn it this way to access this one. got those out next step is under the dash right here you're gonna see a little outline you see it right there a little outline and you're gonna use a pick tool or a very small flathead screwdriver carefully push that down and that's gonna expose a 
10 millimeter bolt. All right, we're gonna loosen that bolt. And remove it. All right. All right, so once that bolt is out, we're gonna move over here and you've got another 10 millimeter under this kick panel. So we're just gonna pop this out and it'll take me two hands to do that. And I don't think we're gonna have to remove the door seal. We're just gonna pop this out and move it over just slightly to expose that 10 millimeter to get our ratchet on it. This tool is really good for this type of stuff. Saves your fingers a ton. All right. And there's the 10 millimeter right there. So be able to get to him without removing this. So for this, you can use a ratchet or a socket wrench but I'm going to use a nut driver so it's easier to get back in there and get that out. As you can see, there we go. Just don't drop the bolt down in here or you'll be removing more to fish that out. that out okay so once we have that 10 millimeter bolt out we've got to remove this so I've already popped the hood I'm gonna try and lower this so you guys can see up under there all right so up near the top there is a little I guess plastic pin it holds it in so basically we're gonna take a pick tool or a flathead screwdriver and I'll need two hands to do this. We're gonna lift that tab, push this in and the whole mechanism should pop out. Okay, so there's a little flip switch right in the middle. You just pop that loose and it pulls out. That little switch switch or piece of plastic that holds it right there in the middle that's what you'll be looking for oh i'm sorry guys right there and i'll show you the what it looks like under it right directly in the middle it's like a light switch in the middle that's what will loosen this from that just like that okay now that we've got that out of the way we've got to remove this and it's basically just pull it apart. So I'm going to use my blue trim tool, trim puller tool to pop that loose All right, carefully because this is just plastic. You don't want to break anything. All right. I do have that loose. It's out of the clip right there. So I can just about get my fingers behind it. There it is, just pop loose. Okay. Oh, careful, careful. Lay this out of the way. I've got my tripod in here. A lot of stuff in here trying to make our make our way. So now on to the right, next. So yep. now that we've got that cover off, we're gonna take and we're gonna pull this loose. Just gonna walk around and pop walk around pop see all of this just came out came loose all right pops loose now this is going to remain so that's going to not allow it to come all the way down all right so we've got the bottom half loose it's still connected as you can see down here on the hood latch but i can show you how that'll slide right off i'm gonna show you how to remove these sort of got 
a little insert right there that you push with your finger. So it's not like the old style where you could push the whole thing, sort of a guard. You push in there and remove, push in there and remove. So it just fell all the way down. But you guys, still I found it a little tough to remove that. So I'm just going to leave it. You guys can remove it, do whatever you want to, but it's out of my way for what I need up in here. So next step, you guys remember my first step was I removed the screws up here. Okay, so basically what we're going to do is I'm going to pull down on both sides of the steering column and separate it. So we're going to remove the bottom of the plastic to the steering column. And I'm going to show you, I just, I was able to push in where the middle connects. You push in and pull down just like that. There we go bottom is loose all right so we'll set that right there so now you can see we have access to the bottom of the steering column also the connector boards over here okay so i'm gonna go ahead and open our box take out our uh there's one of our the modules and basically Oh, I tell you what's cool. I have my own uh, uh, plastic removal tool, but they give you one with the uh, remote Start X. That's pretty cool. Okay, so we're gonna open the plastic to the wiring. It, it gives you all kinds of little zip ties, um, some other, yeah, this, it's got some things in here. So we're gonna explore this and uh, show you where to plug this T-harness and all up all right guys so out of the box this is your t harness is what they call a t harness okay so you're going to take the smaller one i think it's the smaller one yeah the smaller one right here okay and you're going to look up right here where i'm pointing and it's going to be the middle one and you're just going to release that one just like that okay all right, so once you've released that, you're going to take your T-harness, and it will only plug into this exact one, so don't worry about getting it wrong. Did you hear that click in? Okay, so now we're going to take this and plug it into the other side of our harness, which it's going to take me two hands to probably do. I will try it, but nah. Nah, that ain't going to work with one hand, but... I'm going to connect this into this. There it is. All right. Okay, so we got that main T-harness connection. All right, we still have another T-harness, the smaller T-harness down here. Sorry, guys. All right. Right here. I'm sorry. This is the other T-harness. So we're going behind here. And we're going over to the other side. Okay, so we're on the your right knee under the steering column, you see? All right, so what we're looking for here, and I see it already right here. See this? It's right behind this. It's not these two. You'll come right behind it. Push in and remove that. It's a black plug. Now what we're gonna do is take our T-harness that, that we've got and I'll do this first, I guess. We're gonna just put it in line. Wow, that's incredibly hard to do with one hand. It is crazy. Oh, okay. Maybe it's because I had it backwards there. All right. Clipped in. And now we're going to take the other side and put in the factory connection. Just like that. So it's right under there, but it's above this. Okay. I apologize, everyone, for the chirping. 
but I have to have that on. All right, programming is a very important part and I really didn't understand the instructions at first. It took me a few minutes, but your small black connector is the only one that we will connect at this time. And before we connect it, we're gonna push the push button down because if you just connect it, it will alternate red, yellow, blue, red, yellow, blue. And we don't want that. So we're gonna hold this button down. We're gonna push the connector in and it's gonna alternate between the red, yellow, blue. So once it gets to the blue only, you release and you see it's blue lit only. That's an important step. Now we're gonna finish the connectors. All right, you'll notice the blue is still lit. All the connectors are in place. All right, for the next step, very important, do not push the brakes, anything like that. We're gonna reach over here on the console and push the starter twice. All right, blue has went off. Push one more time. Did you notice the blue flash? That's what we wanted to see. So basically you're push to start on your dash. You push it twice. That turns your battery on, your accessories. Then you wait. It should flash rapidly. You push it one more time. Should be programmed now. Okay guys, first try right here. We're gonna see if it works. One, two, three. Made two more beeps. Ah, oh, look at that. There we go. That's using the factory remote. Perfect. Okay, so, but when you open the door, oh, we hit unlock, open the door, it will turn itself off. And that is um, one of the things a lot of people don't like about it, but I think it's a good security feature. Now we're gonna zip tie our wires up nice and neatly, put our panels back and you're good to go. Okay. Put these zip ties right here. We're gonna trim the edges of that, but it's over to the side. Basically behind this, we've got to plug our uh, buttons up right here on the dash. And, but that's where it'll go, zip tied there. We're gonna put a zip tie possibly over here, holding this up just to be neat. I guess you don't really have to. Okay, so, there's the uh, instructions, really good. Uh, when we first started the kit, I opened this and I was like, oh my goodness, what is this switch and this wire? Professional installer, that is not needed for you and I guys, it's just not needed. I don't, you know, somebody else, another video can show you what that's all about. But I just proved right then that with just a few basic tools, this can be done. Now I wanna talk about this just a minute before we finish the video, guys. I am really pissed off that somebody would insult my intelligence to tell me when I already knew, I've seen other people install this and I knew that it did not take a professional installer with special programming to accomplish this job. That really makes me mad, so I think I'm gonna call them back and just let them know that I know. I mean, there's certain things I can't let slide, I'm sorry. But just basically to lie to my face so they can make a few extra hundred dollars. I mean, 200 bucks, I'm sure they probably get it for cheaper than that or right at that. And then to get an extra $300 for install and that took me 30 minutes. The hardest thing about it was getting the panels off and y'all saw it wasn't all that. I mean, it was not all that. So we're gonna call this video finished, but 
I want you guys to know that you can do this. If I can do it, you can do it. Let's not pay these vultures two, three hundred extra dollars. I mean, yeah, if you want to pay somebody for install, pay them for install. I'd say a hundred bucks. That's a fair price. Um, or, or whatever an hour's, you know, an hour's worth of labor is, but not $300, no. And then to have them lie to you and tell them and tell you that like they need some special programming that they've got a scanner back there. They plug in and put some special programming inside your Toyota or whatever car you drive. Um, it's really frustrating to me, uh, especially just the lying part. I can't stand that. I can't stand a thief and I can't stand a liar. So, um, but anyway, guys, we're going to finish this video up, call it a wrap for today. And I thank y'all for tuning in. I hope I've helped somebody out. If you need to, if you're, if you're struggling, I reply in the comments hourly. I mean, I will give you a reply quickly. It won't take me a week to get back with you. So if you need some help, give me a yell. And, uh, I appreciate y'all subscribing, following, liking everything that y'all do. And we'll catch you on the next video. Later now.